Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Will's Movie Log. Today I'm coming at you with a review of Trap, the latest M. Night Shyamalan experience. Trap is a psychological thriller that follows a father and daughter who attend a concert together, only to find out that that concert is an elaborate trap set up for a sadistic serial killer who is expected to be in attendance at the concert. Um, this isn't exactly a spoiler, but I do think it's important for people to calibrate their expectations for it, because if you've watched the trailer, you might think that there's some sort of big twist or a kind of bait and switch that's pulled on the audience, and uh, that's just not really the case. I mean, the sort of conceit of the movie is set up pretty early on, and it doesn't really change in any fundamental way. There is a big tonal shift that happens about halfway through the movie, but uh, we'll get to that. Now, right off the bat, the movie starts without any kind of exposition or real explanation of what's going on through the perspective of the characters. And I cannot oversell how well that works for me. There's this incredible distance between you and the main character who's played by Josh Hartnett, where you're sort of seeing everything from his perspective, but you never know exactly what's going on in his head. So you're just kind of along for the ride. And just, you know, that's exactly kind of what I want from a sort of psychological thriller such as this. I was completely engrossed by this and just t totally enthralled by watching Hartnett's character sort of navigate this series of logistical challenges without arousing his daughter's suspicions. There's this weird playfulness to it all and a simultaneous boldness that is reflected in the visual style of the film itself. Watching The Sixth Sense and Old before watching this gave me a heightened appreciation of how Shyamalan's uh, filmmaking style has evolved over the years, particularly with regards to things like shot composition and how experimental that's become. There is a lot of very asymmetrical shot compositions and a lot of very dramatic um, sort of close-ups of actors' expressions and, you know, in, in ways that almost sort of violate the 180-degree rule in film. For those who don't know, the 180-degree rule is this filmmaking principle that basically there's like, if you're having a conversation between two different characters, there's like this imaginary line that runs through them and it's like an axis and you're supposed to shoot on one side of that axis. So if I'm having a conversation with somebody and the camera is sort of, you know, shot over my right shoulder, and then there's a reverse shot of them, it's gonna shoot from over their left shoulder. So it remains, so the, you know, camera remains on one side of us. Otherwise it's kind of, it's, you know, the camera is like flip-flopping between two different axes or one axis and, it, it sort of disrupts the, you know, uh, uh, wall of reality that's, you know, created between... You know what I'm saying. So all of that is to say that breaking or, or at least sort of subverting the 180 degree rule by, by, by pushing right up to the ragged edge of it. And Shyamalan isn't the only person who does this. Demi has done it. Um, the Japanese filmmaker Ozu, I believe, is, is uh, famous for doing it. And it's an effective way to sort of subvert um, uh, uh, filmmaking principles so as to create an unconventional cinematic language in your movie, which only works if you're a talented filmmaker, which Shyamalan is. And none of this is just some pretentious parlor trick. I mean, all of it serves the purpose of creating this very off-kilter, uneasy atmosphere that Shyamalan just has a knack for creating with his directing style and, you know, that and, and mainly that and kind of the types of performances that he's able to elicit from his actors. Now, like I said, the first half of the movie, roughly speaking, 
is the part that takes place throughout the concert itself. And that's when it is this sort of procedural cat and mouse thriller. However, when Hartnett and his daughter leave the concert, there's a very dramatic tonal shift where the movie becomes something very different. And I think that people's enjoyment of Trap is going to hinge on how they feel about that tonal shift and how they feel about the second half of the movie. Because as the action becomes more and more ludicrous, and trust me, the lengths of suspension of disbelief that are expected of the audience member go to some truly absurd heights. And as the movie progresses more and more, this sort of initial serial killer thriller that it starts off as, the nuts and bolts of that really start to buckle and they really start to fly off. And what replaces it is a domestic family drama that becomes more heightened, more absurd, more fantastical, more melodramatic as the movie progresses further and further. And the first time I watched this, I was really not sure how I felt about it. I mean, overall, I really liked it, but, you know, I knew I needed to go back for another viewing. And I have to say, on a second viewing, not only does Trap hold up, I actually liked it quite a bit more. I don't think that Trap is supposed to be taken at face value, which is not to say that everything that we're seeing is pure fantasy and everything is just a projection of Hartnett's character. I think that Shyamalan's movies have always been about sort of disrupting this sort of dichotomy between reality and fantasy in favor of creating a heightened reality that is told through the window of character-driven dramas and it goes a long way in explaining why the performances that he elicits from his actors are so heightened and so intense and all of the actors who are there to give those performances josh hartnett allison pill uh salika Shyamalan, uh m knight's daughter all absolutely kill it and they absolutely understand the assignment and overall I loved this. I absolutely loved it. I think that any movie that has a big tonal shift like this, it sometimes is going to take multiple viewings for me to really be able to kind of wrap my arms around it. But I think it's totally engrossing. I think that it is um, enjoyable. I think it's ridiculous in the best way possible. It's exactly the kind of cinematic insanity that i love and it is not only entertaining but scratches a lot of my sort of personal itches in terms of what i like um as a film nerd mainly in the way it sort of like i said i mean subverts this dichotomy between reality and fantasy in favor of creating a heightened reality so it's not going to work for everybody, but it really, really worked for me. And it's a contender for being my favorite movie of the year. So for me, Trap gets a very, very strong four out of five stars, maybe five. The only thing stopping me from giving five stars is, is I really don't like to downgrade my rating after a certain period of time. So I'm pretty conservative with how I rate movies. Um, I also don't do half stars. So if you're like, why aren't you giving it a four and a half star? I only do have whole star ratings. But yeah, it's 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 possibly a five star movie for me. So highly recommend it. Um, I think um, you know, I, I think you should give it a shot. Maybe it's it's your up your alley, maybe it's not. Um, at this point, I think most people know how they feel about M. Night Shyamalan as a filmmaker. So if his you know, style is not really your bag, then this might not be for you. But if you have seen it, um, what did you think of it? Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of Trap. How does it stack up to the rest of M. Night Shyamalan's filmography? Do you like him? Have you always been a Shyamalan truther? Um, do you think that he has not made a good movie since Unbreakable or The Sixth Sense? And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, like, subscribe, 
comment, and I should be back next week for a review of Alien Romulus, which I saw last night. So until next time, take care.